computation. So let let me go back a little bit. Um, lecture three will be about analysis of algorithm. Okay. Lecture four will be about logic theory, which is a very useful tool uh, in discrete mathematics. One applied topic on logic that we will discuss is prolog, and then we will discuss two uh, interesting structure, which is graph and tree. We can use graph and tree uh, as a way to solve problem when we want to design an algorithm. Okay, when we want to solve some problem, we have to write down an algorithm. We can use graph and tree structure to help us to understand the problem more precisely. And we can invent or design an algorithm to solve the problem more efficiently by using this graph and tree. And then the two more lectures will focus on model of computation. Okay. Uh, this is a very high level um, view of computation. So it is beyond algorithm. The algorithm is very much uh, simple, very much primitive, very primitive and very elementary. But if we view computation in a very general, uh, we can describe it as some kind of machinery. We will discuss many kind of machinery in the, in two lectures. Uh, hopefully, you can. After that, you will see, you can have a very good view, a good concept about computation. I'll explain this later on. And then we will uh, dedicate four lectures on uh, applied graph theory. We call it patronage. Okay. But before we start our first lecture, uh, let me introduce this discrete mathematics to you. What is discrete mathematics? First, our aim, the aim of ma discrete mathematics is not about precise measurement. Okay. In, in other, in um, non-discrete mathematics, continuous type of mathematics, those kind of mathematics aim to provide precise measurement. Okay. But here we do not want the precise measurement. So in many cases we do not involve about number. But we want to provide precise characterization of complex behavior of a system. Okay, it's not about measurement, but it be it will be about precise characterization, explanation, analysis and so on on the very complex system. That kind of behavior will come when we put a lot of systems together. And those systems may interact in many complex ways. We want to find a tool to characterize the interaction, the behavior, and the analysis. Okay. We want to study that kind of tool. And the kind of behavior that we want to analyze, it is very high level. You know, high level, I mean, you know, like um, we want to talk about the uh, uh, fairness property. Okay, we might want, we may have um, a protocol, a system which allow two parties to exchange messages. We want to make sure that this system is reliable, it's fair, it's secure, whatever. That property is high level. We want to talk about that property. Okay? And in order to talk about that, those kind of property, we need a lot of abstraction. Okay? If you talk about precise measurement, it will be very, very primitive and elementary. Those kind of mathematics is very hard to to generalize to talk about the the high level thing. So to talk about high level thing, you need a lot of abstraction. That is 
the job of this discrete mathematics. Okay, we only talk about the concept, conceptual level, rather than implementation. So let me put it differently. Discrete mathematics is a mathematics for computing. Okay. You may ask, what is computing? What does it mean by computing? Uh, a computing is a system which takes some input and generates some output with finite amount of resources. Our system only has finite amount of resources. Okay, finite amount of memory, finite amount of um, disk space, finite amount of execution time. We don't want to compute forever and unable to give any answer. We don't have much time. Okay, we have only finite time. So that, that is the definition for computing. So in such definition, we have finite amount of resources. This is very important. So it's finite and the nature of computing or the nature of computation is done step by step okay, in, in computing. Everything is step by step. If you think about algorithm, it is executed step by step. Firstly, you do some checking, then you do some assignment to some variable, you cal calculate something, you do some looping, and so on. So this, this step by step execution is the nature of algorithm, which is the main, um, the main component in, in, in computing in software, for example, or even protocol. Everything is executed step by step. Okay, a sender sends a message to receiver. Receiver do some computation and then return the answer and send back some message. So everything is step by step. Okay. Then the problem that this kid may try to answer uh, is can be described in step by step nature. Let me have a look at each kind of example in computing. If we want to talk about software or program, to model the execution of program, uh, the best way to do that is by using trace. So each step of program may make changes to variable. This cycle represents one step of a program. In a state, it contains many values of variables in your program. So your program can change from one state to another by perhaps changing some variables. For example, you assign 4 to x, you do some computation and assign the value to x. The state is changed. Okay? And if we capture if we capture the chain of state, if we capture the chain of state, we get trace, which is sequence of changes in variable. เอ๊ะทําไมบางคนผมไม่เห็นอยู่นะคุณน่าคุณตามนะฮะคือคือบางคอร์สผมเจอแบบเหมือนกับคือผมก็สอนแบบเหมือนกับคือถ้าไม่ได้จบคอมพิวเตอร์มาเนี่ยคือผมไม่รู้ไงผมก็
talk about step by step execution 